Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm gonna to be making Bon Appetit's best guacamole. So I'm a huge guacamole fan and what I like about it is that it's just a few simple ingredients that come together for this perfect balance of flavors and textures. This recipe was developed by Rick from the Test Kitchen, so I'm really excited to give it a try today. I do these Bon Appetit recipe tests every single Wednesday, so if you like this one, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. All right, without any further ado, let's see how this goes. All the ingredient quantities are in the description box below. So I'm gonna start by just preparing all of my ingredients. So first I'm just rolling the lime on the counter to get the juices kind of flowing and make it a little bit easier to squeeze by hand. Next, I'm finally chopping the white onion. So I'm placing my vertical slits about half a centimeter apart. You don't really wanna have a giant piece of white onion in the finished guacamole, so you wanna chop this pretty finely. The recipe calls for just one clove of garlic, so I'm just smashing it with the flat side of the chef's knife to make it a little bit easier to get the paper off, and then I'm just finely grating this using my microplane. The recipe called for one serrano chili. My grocery service did not have serranos, so I subbed with just a jalapeno. This particular jalapeno was actually pretty mild, so I ended up including the entire finely chopped jalapeno in my guacamole. However, I've had jalapenos that were super spicy in the past, so it's a great idea to taste your spicy pepper prior to adding to the recipe. That way you can assess the heat level of that specific pepper and you don't end up over spicing your food. Next, I'm just picking the leaves off my washed cilantro. So I am a huge fan of cilantro, but I know that this is a really kind of controversial and polarizing flavor. So I'm really curious, do you like cilantro or do you think it tastes like soap? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to see what everyone thinks. Once the cilantro is all picked and dried, you wanna chop it really finely. So you need one quarter of a cup for the recipe and then a little bit more for garnishing at the end. So you're gonna need three ripe Haas avocados for this recipe. So when you're at the grocery store, you're probably gonna see two different types of avocados. The Haas have the dark green skin that looks bumpy. There's also this avocado called a Florida avocado that has a lighter green skin that's shiny. On the inside, the Florida avocado has much less fat. It's about a third the fat of a Haas avocado. It also has much more fiber, so it's really a little bit stringier and tougher. So for a really great guacamole, you want the fat and creaminess of the Haas avocado, so make sure that you get the correct one. When scoring the avocado in the peel, I like to use a table knife rather than a chef's knife. It's really easy to cut through the peel and you can risk cutting your hand if you have a sharp knife. So use something with a round tip or use a cut glove for your safety. When it comes to smashing guacamole, you've got tons of options. You can use a mortar and pestle, you can use a potato masher, you can use a pastry cutter, you can use a fork, a food processor. Really anything you wanna do that's gonna smash avocados will get the job done. If you choose to garnish this, you can use the leftover cilantro and some toasted pumpkin seeds. All right, so the guacamole is all done. I took the texture to kind of that halfway point between chunky and smooth. That's how I like my guacamole. Obviously, if you're making this at home, you can do it however you like. The aroma coming off of this is fantastic. So the cilantro and lime are really bright and kind of coming through on the top. I get a little bit of an undernote of the garlic and the onion, but I'm really dying to give this a taste, so let's see. So really well-balanced flavor. Nothing is kind of screaming and over the top here. So this is a really kind of neutral, classic recipe that's really, really tasty. So yeah, I'm really happy. I'll definitely be making this again. So I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.